Pokrima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is political analyst, Professor Raymond Sadna to discuss his column, Revitalizing Democratic Life. You relate a report of President Sir Ramaphosa's visit to Soweto where he undertakes to have electricity problems sorted out in Nomzamo. What is wrong with that? Well, you know, he's had years to visit them about electricity. Why does he visit them now and say he'll fix it up next week by Tuesday or something like that? It's people, people, it's, it's, um, people are cynical anyway, but when you suddenly turn up and you are alarmed about something that people have lived with for years and it's, it's really, it doesn't show the ANC up in a good light. It actually confirms what people think that you're not there except when it's election time. And what about the rest of the country? You've or even the rest of Soweto. This is just one small part of Soweto that he's going to fix up. And the rest of the country, there's lots of places with no electricity or electricity problems. I'm not saying that the ANC has done nothing and that they have never, uh, that they haven't made a better life for people in, in many respects. But it doesn't... Um, seem convincing to suddenly appear there just before elections and attend to electricity. There's a minister to involved in that, should have attended to it long before the president went there. And are you saying that the ANC will lose this upcoming elections? Now, I, I don't know, you know. What I do think is that the ANC is on the way down and uh, whether it uh, loses elections, uh, I can't predict. But what I think is happening is that even if the ANC wins elections, it doesn't have the prestige or the authority that it used to have. So consequently, it may continue to govern for a long time and to win elections for a long time. Although we know from 2016 local government elections that the ANC is not invincible anymore. In 2016, they lost uh, Johannesburg, they lost Nelson Mandela Univers um, Metro, they lost uh, Tswane, and they had, a they had a minority in Ikurulen. So uh, it's, the ANC is not invincible and there's a lot of dissatisfaction around the lists. So it may well be that some ANC people will not vote for the ANC because they're unhappy about candidates. And you criticize the ANC for wanting to remain in power. What is wrong with that? Well, you see, I criticize them for wanting to remain in power without an objective beyond that, that they want to be in power, get their salaries and get contracts and all sorts of other things. But a liberation movement, uh, as I understood it when I was involved, was there to serve the people. And this notion of service um, is something that people are, they laugh if you say to them that the leadership is a servant leadership. I mean, people like Lutuli used to refer to the gospel of service, and he really did serve. And Lutuli, uh, you know, we think that in the 1950s you couldn't be corrupt, but he had the opportunity. He had criminal jurisdiction as a chief, and he could have made money by imposing fines, but he never imposed fines. So that uh, there are examples from before this when there was much less opportunity. But today, the idea of service is something that people will just laugh at because it's, it's obvious that very few people do think about that. I think it's also uh, because people are unemployed, they're living in poverty, and if you get an ANC position, 
you can at least get a little bit of money to put bread on the table. So that's one of the reasons, I think, not just immorality, but need. Are you correct to suggest that the ANC has changed so much, especially your suggestion that they are indifferent to the poor? Someone like Mandela and Sisulu used to listen to everyone. You know, any, if, you went to, if they went to any village, they would listen to what they felt and they would then say to the premier, if the premier was with them or the mayor, please attend to this. And that wasn't just at election times. And you get the impression that right now they, they don't really feel the pain of the oppressed. The pain of the oppressed was made the pain of the ANC in the earlier period. And because they felt the same pain as the poor, they, they worked very hard for it. Now, I just think they're indifferent. I mean, yesterday in City Press, there's a story about water, money, billions being defrauded for water in Guiani. Now, what does that tell you? That people want to eat the money rather than help the people of the, the area. And lastly, is your reference to reviving popular power as in the 1980s realistic? Well, you know, I'm a dinosaur, you know. I still believe in these things from the 1980s because they were very, very important. And in the 1980s, people didn't just look up to their leaders to do everything. They organized street committees and things like this. Now, there are still street committees, parts of Soweto, and in other parts of the country. But what was important about that is that people didn't trust the police from the apartheid regime. And they also don't trust the police now in many areas. And people used to, as a block or as a street or as a neighborhood, they would sit together to try to mediate and assist to deal with problems. Um, and I think we have to find a way where politics for ordinary people is not simply voting every five years, because uh, we need an active citizenry, people who have some control over their own lives, who play some part in remedying uh, the wrongs that are done to them. So that's what I believe in, but I'm not sure how it happens. At the moment, you have one or two popular organizations like Abba Khali, Basim Jondolo, in, uh, well, they started off in Durban, but they are in a number of other parts of the country. They've got about 150,000 paid up members. Equal education is both an NGO and a social movement. You need more of those sorts of things. People organizing in, as religious communities, as civic communities, as youth and student communities. You do have some, but a lot of them are conveyor belts for the ANC or for EFF and things like that. You need people who operate on a local level not necessarily as party political organizations. They may just be dealing with the environment as you have in the Abba Amadiba crisis committee. They may be dealing with gender and a whole lot of other things. So I don't think it's impossible. It happens uh, in most countries every now and again, but it seems to fizzle out. Now I think we need to revive it. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's policy about revitalizing democratic life.